I always wanted to sit down and make a, make a whole um, list and review of all the prophecies that Muhammad made, which um, I still haven't done. It's kind of hard to do because um, for some reason, there is, never, there is no complete list of all the prophecies that Muhammad did. And you would expect that uh, Muslims would actually make something like that. There would actually be a list of all the prophecies with, I mean, with such an organized religion that is followed by so many people, you would expect that, right? Unfortunately, there is no such thing for different reasons. Reason number one is that he made a lot of prophecies that sound pretty weird and that are not, that cannot be fulfilled and that were never fulfilled, that are completely invalid uh, nowadays. And if you put them down like that, you will have to make an explanation to that, which is of course hard. They usually disregard certain prophecies that don't really make sense. The other reason is that you basically cherry pick what you see as a prophecy and what you don't. It's, it's basically what you just said. Some things are not really meant to be prophecies. They're just things that are being said, but you are like, oh, look, this is a prophecy and it was fulfilled today. It's being fulfilled right now, actually. There are so many prophecies that Muhammad made, which Muslims share online and um, on the street in circles, which they say are prophecies that are coming true right now. And this has been going on forever. This is not something new. I, when I was a child, I heard the same things. Like, look, this is happening right now. Yesterday, this happened over there somewhere in the world. This was prophesied in the, uh, in the Quran or this was prophesied in the Hadiths. And the same thing, you can find that today. Something happens in, in, in Iceland you know, and they say, look, this, is, this was prophesied by Muhammad. I know I remember that whole cloud coming from a volcano in Iceland. Uh, that's, that's what my mind is going to right now. And that was uh, interpreted by many Muslims as a fulfillment of a prophecy. The funny thing is when you look at the Islamic sources, when you look at the hadiths themselves, you will find contemporaries of Muhammad saying that some of the prophecies of the major prophecies of the coming of the end of time have already been fulfilled. And these are supposed to be the last prophecies that come before the last hour. There are certain hadiths which clearly say the smokes or uh, smokes arising and covering a vast area is a prophecy that has already been fulfilled. And that is a prophecy that is supposed to be one of the final prophecies which come immediately before the last hour. According to some of Muhammad's companions, that happened in the seventh century. <laughs> Where are we right now? And so when it comes to the whole tall building prophecy, that is, for example, one that uh, Muslims propagate very often nowadays because they say, look, we have skyscrapers, we have uh, tall buildings in, in Dubai and in Saudi Arabia and this and that. And Muhammad said, according to, this, to these reports, that um, the hour will not come until shepherds, barefooted, destitute shepherds will compete in the construction of tall buildings. The, the problem with that is that you don't actually find that exact wording in all of the reports. You only find that in uh, some. In some, you will find people will build tall buildings. In some people, you will find people will con uh, compete in tall buildings. In some, you will find shepherds with black camels or just shepherds will compete in tall buildings. In others, you find destitute shepherds. In some, you find destitute shepherds will rule the world and people will compete in tall buildings. So you find these different reports which don't, which are not entirely consistent, but people just uh, pick one of those reports and they say, look, Muhammad said, barefooted destitute shepherds will uh, compete in the construction of tall buildings and what's happening today in the desert, in Saudi Arabia or in Dubai, people who are barefooted and who wear sandals and walk in the desert and usually don't have much or didn't have much back then are now building tall buildings. Is that really what it says, though? It's not really what it says, isn't it? Is it? I mean, <laughs> it says barefooted, destitute shepherds will build tall buildings. According to many Muslim scholars, this is something that was fulfilled back in Muhammad's time. In fact, according to uh, arguably the most famous uh, scholar on Hadith studies, uh, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, um, who, when was he alive? Damn, I forgot the time. 14th century, 15th century, whatever. He said that this is a prophecy that came true in Muhammad's time. You know? and, and, but but here, here we are, people saying today in the 21st century that this is coming true right now. That's the problem. People take words that Muhammad said and do whatever they want with them. They don't have to prove 
that this is the actual prophecy and the prophecy is actually coming true right now. All they have to do is say, look, Muhammad said this and look what's happening right now. And they can say this for 1,400 years about whatever they see. And nobody will come out and say, no, this is definitely false. And we will never say this again, because you can just keep saying it again and again and again. If this goes on for a thousand years, people will make the same attempt in a thousand years to say, look, Muhammad said this 2,400 years ago, and it's happening right now. This is just how it works. And, and, and while doing this, they also completely disregard some very absurd ideas, like s stuff like uh, before the end, uh, you will fight the Romans and you will defeat the Romans and then you will conquer this and then you will conquer Constantinople and, and, uh, and then you will get Jerusalem and then the Dajjal will come and then the end will come and so on. Where are the Romans? The Romans are gone a long time ago. But when you ask them <laughs> now, they say, they say, well, the Romans is just... A reference to Western people. Oh, right. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. You got me there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, you know, the thing is with these, and this is what they are the subjective, entirely subjective um, statements, prophecies. And it, it's suspiciously as if they knew this was going to be questioned, but they also knew that anything like a statement such as such as that, like can be twisted in a number of different ways. Um, and yes, some are far more specific than others because you could, you could kind of claim that oh, all of them are vague. I mean, I guess so. Some are, are more vague than others. That's kind of the trick, isn't it? Is, is to make it as slippery as possible that in one case you could say, oh yeah, fair enough that happened it's just an endless rabbit hole that i think i don't know it feels to me it's kind of on purpose because if it if th th this is the thing if they were objective if they were like legitimately straight what's the issue then well it might not come true and <laughs> and, and how does it look when it doesn't come true well not very not very good um, but even the dancing still occurs. I mean, you can even dance further and further along and you can say, oh, well, it, it only it happened 200 years ago or it's, or it's still to come. And that's something actually that's quite popular. It's like, ah, ah, just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it won't happen. Yeah. <laughs> and that, again, like to me, it's just a divine entity really is using these methodologies. I mean, it, it feels like an instant insult to my intelligence it insult to humankind and their intelligence it it really is uh, embarrassing in, in some aspects and uh, it just really confuses me because if if Allah if, if if the Islamic conception of God exists is he really trying to convince us with all of this I mean yeah what, what if what if Muhammad had said for example um in about, uh, I don't know, 1,300 years from now, um, people will travel long distances on uh, objects that are so long and so tall, which are designed to lift from the ground and fly and this and that. Well, what if he had said uh, in 1,400 years from now, people will develop a technology where they can um, sit in front of, you know, objects which they can, uh, you know, manipulate and then communicate with people from around the world and uh, share their share their images and things like that. I mean, you know, this this sounds like uh, as as a Muslim, you're probably like, oh, you're asking for too much, or well, what do you think? You think he's going to predict the internet? Yeah, well, why not? Why are prophecies not? Very obvious and undeniable, right? Yeah. Why did he not say? Uh, in five days, something will happen over there in this location and a huge, I don't know, uh, a huge piece of gold will fall down from the sky. And then it actually happens. Why are his prophecies, his predictions, not things that are very precise, extremely uh, accurate, undeniable, which are clear proof some Muslims will even come out and give a ridiculous response to this and say something like, well, if it was like that, then it would be uh, too obvious or it would be too, too easy to believe. Like, dude, what's the problem? 
What is the point of miracles? What is the, what is the entire point of these prophecies, of these predictions? It, the point to me, as it seems, is just uh, for you to hold on to something which is so vague, which you can bend as you wish in order to uh, affirm or reaffirm your uh, already held biases, which you have acquired by faith, mostly by being born into this faith and being indoctrinated with it that's all the purpose that it serves and when you don't when you don't look at those prophecies as actual prophecies that actually happen so when you don't have that bias they are not convincing at all on the contrary they are often very ludicrous this, this is what we are facing why is it not all more obvious you know it's, it's i'm not even talking about some very problematic things like there, there is one. Uh, there are some predictions that Muhammad made, which are uh, which are very problematic, and which I mention quite often, such as uh, Muhammad said um, one night he prayed for a long time, and then he said, "You don't realize the importance of this night. Uh, one hundred years from now, uh, no human alive on the on the face of the earth will be alive." Or something like that. He says something to that effect. And this is reported in multiple sources. Now, when I look at that, what he clearly says is that within a hundred years, humanity will be gone. You know, that's what that's what he says. But uh, most of us say, no, no, you're just stupid. You're just not understanding it. What he actually meant was that in a hundred years, the people who are living right now will be dead and then other people will live again. Okay, well, first off, what in the world is the point of saying that? Oh, shit. That? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. really? Like, but, yeah. And, and secondly, secondly, uh, you're saying that this is something that I don't understand because I'm just, you know, a disbeliever or stupid. What's funny is that those reports, those hadiths, some of them have a note below them, which was made by the scholars, uh, which say, we pre, uh, the people previously misunderstood this and thought this is about the hour, but what he really meant is this and this and this. So people initially thought that he's talking about the, the coming of the hour, but then it didn't happen. So they, they thought, okay, well, we, we got that wrong. Mm. He, he can't and, be wrong. We got that wrong. What he obviously meant is something else. Yeah. And, and the, the thing is with prophecies as well, like if one is wrong, all of them are. Because to say that a divine prophecy, even one, is wrong, yes. is to confirm that God was wrong, and i.e. to, to, to demolish the entire idea to begin with. Um, I, I want to be a bit of a devil's advocate and ask you uh, more about prophecies. Like, what do you think would convince you? Because you, you've already said, like, um, I, well, I don't know if this would personally convince you, but okay, let's, let's go back to the gold uh, the bricks of gold example that you brought up. So I was thinking, and I, I really like Matt Dillahunty on on. I think he did. I think he did one episode. I think he did. Yeah, one one call in show um, on YouTube where it was dedicated to prophecies. I think, and and I really found that interesting. Um, but I was left. I, I was left kind of in conflict because I was like, okay, look, we can dismiss his prophecies and say it could be better, but how? What would genuinely convince you? And, and Matt Delahunty is kind of of the opinion from what I remember is, well, you can't ever demonstrate a prophecy is genuinely divine. I'm wondering if you think the same, because you mentioned the gold bricks falling. And I was like, yeah, I mean, fair enough. But at the same time, let's say that happened 200 years ago. That's the problem. And we, and we have historical documents saying that. Would you personally say yeah fair enough or would you be like hmm, i don't know i kind of doubt the documents because i know i would i i would be like yeah do i do i really want to trust people from 200 years ago and just their eyewitness testimonies i, I guess evidence can have severities to it like fair enough like it, it could be a mass observation um but but even then you you could even go quite far and say hey look even if something's videoed it was tampered with and, and I like the Brothers Go Mad Soul for this, because what's really what's interesting in the Grand Inquisitor section is it kind of demonstrates how even if a prophet came to us, it, it would be virtually impossible unless we received an individual divine revelation each, which you could probably still doubt if you had free will. So even that's an issue. <laughs> but but it, it, it's just for me, I feel like it's maybe impossible, yeah. maybe impossible to 
be convinced of of, of a prophecy, like to be certain of that. Um, Here, yeah. Here's the thing. Um, when people usually ask me what would convince me of um, that there is a God or something, or that there is something spiritual, I, what I say is, uh, I made up this dumb thing where, <laughs> where I say, um, if somebody who we know for certain is missing a leg and we have medical records and uh, all that, uh, if, if that guy goes onto a public square and uh, makes a major broadcast and prays, and we then see that a leg suddenly descends from the sky and comes and magically attaches itself to that guy's leg and he's like, he can suddenly walk then i would think wow okay something really messed up is going on here and i and i was complete and i was wrong it's uh, obviously there is something more to this now what's going on that's what i would think i wouldn't think okay okay there's a god i i will now pray i would think okay there's something more what's going on right so th th that's that's a standard that apparently people find too much, which just makes me think, I'm sorry, you have very low standards. That is, <laughs> I have to see something which actually uh, convinces me that it's true. If you want to rely on miracles, if you want to rely on prophecies and all that, then rely on something that is an actual miracle, not on hearsay. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to prophecies, now there is an instance of uh, Muhammad uh, supposedly uh, uh, I don't know, splitting the moon, right? Um, th th there, is a, there is an instance where people say, uh, where people don't trust him or don't believe him. And they're like, uh, you know, we, we don't trust you, you can't do anything. And then uh, they demand a miracle from him according to the Islamic uh, message. And uh, the moon is then split in two uh, by Allah. And people see this and they're like, wow, this is magic. This is not real. That's what they, they say according to the Islamic sources. Um, which I think is complete nonsense. It probably never happened. Probably never happened. Yeah. Look, look how I'm being very uh, <laughs> gen generous here saying probably yeah, never happened. Yeah. But um, here is the thing. Like in that instance, but the reason why I don't believe it happened is that all we have are a few vague reports about it that come from uh, later times. Which, uh, which say that some people witnessed that this happened in Muhammad's time, which is something that is unreliable. The major reason why I don't believe in it is the moon is being split in two and no single person, no single culture in the world has seen it. There is no record of anybody seeing this, which is just ridiculous, I'm sorry. I would believe that it may have happened if we had an abundance of records from the Romans, from the Persians, from Indians, from other cultures at that time that were very active in writing things down or observing the moon and the sun and so on. If we had multiple records of people reporting that something very strange happened that night and they, and they agree on the date and the night where they say the moon suddenly split in two for a while and then came back together. I would think, okay, we have a record of that. There is, it's, it's very, it's, it's, it would be very strange of us to deny something that people from different parts of the world all came together and agreed upon and they, they record it. Uh, it would be very weird for us to deny that. But then to accept that this was because of Muhammad in Mecca, that would again require more evidence, more that would require higher standards, right? I, the, the, the issue is, even if we had records from around the world that something like that happened, we are still only left with some vague reports from centuries later which say that Muhammad brought this as a miracle. It might very well be that people simply made this up after the fact in order to you know, create such a, such a message. So we can't actually know if that is uh, genuinely true or not. What could change that is if Muhammad had gone to, I don't know, one of the most publicly available, one of the most world famous places in his time, like in Constantinople, if he went to Constantinople at that time and invited world leaders and historians and all that from around the world and people actually gathered there mm -hmm. and everybody observed this and people from all kinds of different cultures and all that made a note of that, that this actually happened, then I would think, okay, this is, 
quite credible evidence, right? This is not easy to dismiss because we have numerous, multiple different people with all kinds of different interests and motivations coming together and actually documenting something like that, which is amazing. It's very hard for us to deny this, extremely hard for us to deny this. We would have to assert that all kinds of people for some weird, very strange reason came together and agreed for, to engage in a conspiracy, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Co in comparison to that, the actual evidence that we have is laughably ridiculous. Mm. And these standards are not met. And again, all we have are things that supposedly happened somewhere uh, a thousand, thousand four hundred years ago or thousands of years ago and we are supposed to trust some guys when, when you can't even trust your neighbor and why am i not being convinced by actually unbelievable stuff that happens right now so i can see it and then think about whether i want to believe what i'm seeing or not why am i supposed to trust yeah. some dudes and, and 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 what people report as a miracle to begin with is is biased upon their own experience i mean mm -hmm. You know, Dynamo, the, the magician, effectively, he is a prophet because um, a thousand years ago, if he did that, <clears throat> he, <laughs> there's no question that would be outstanding. Like that, they, they wouldn't necessarily have even the apparatus to demonstrate that it was that it was false, that it was magic. Um, and so really, a testimony of a miracle to me is to begin with quite quite a difficult one because mm. like if your if your standards are really high then you won't regard it as a miracle because like, oh yeah i've seen that before but but if you've if you've witnessed dynamo walk in water like a few times they're like oh yeah that's 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 just not real um he has these i don't know what he has like transparent plates or something underneath it and that's how it looks like he does um and so the whole definition of a miracle is is worth being suspicious about as far as i'm concerned